How's it going guys? So we have a bit of breaking news for you. So the Houston Rockets have acquired Ty Lawson from the Denver Nuggets. So I'm going to tell you the players, the picks are involved, and then we're going to hand over to John. He's going to give us his perspective on the overall theme of the trade. So the Nuggets acquired Pablo Prigioni, Nick Johnson, Joey Dorsey, Kostas Papalikanau, and a 2016 first rounder from the Houston Rockets, which we believe is lottery protected. And in addition to Ty Lawson, the Rockets also got a 2017 second rounder from the Denver Nuggets. So, John, what do you think? This trade was highway robbery in terms of what the Rockets gave up to get Ty Lawson. You would think, just looking at this, that they would have to give up someone like a Sam Decker or a Clint Capella, someone who was a rookie or coming on in their rookie year in terms of uh, Capella, who was playing well, and you think, you know, maybe the Nuggets are getting a piece there. But they didn't really, they got, you know, kind of a dime a dozen role players, rotation players who will fill out a depth chart, basically, for them. And they didn't really get anything, to me, that was significant in terms of giving up someone who's, you know, not quite a superstar, but on that next level, that second level of great player that is Ty Lawson. Yeah, right. It almost looks like a salary dump, really, at this yeah. point. And I think it has so much to do with his, his DUI, his recent one, and then the fact that he's another one. So I think the Rockets were just looking to unload him. They said, The Nuggets you know what? were looking to unload oh, him. Oh, the, the Nuggets, right, right. rather. They, they said, you know what? We're getting a 2016 first rounder. We're freeing up playing time for, for Moutier. Yes. So I think they're seeing it as a, you know, like a plus-plus, really, in the way they're getting rid of him and they're freeing up time for their investment this new group's investment with Mike Malone coming in yes in Moutier and they want to move on from Lawson it'll be interesting to see what else they end up doing but I think the real focus of this is the Rockets and does this propel them into the same stratosphere as like I don't know the Clippers and the Thunder yes. and the Warriors Spurs and Cavs like yes. does this make them that level and the funny thing was that uh when we had today when we recorded this uh, earlier in the day, we had recorded what we thought about the Clippers after re- acquiring Josh Smith and Paul Pierce and Lance Stevenson. And I thought that the Clippers w- could be uh, a title contender. But I think after this after this trade uh, with Ty Lawson, I think the Rockets, the Rockets have uh, jumped ahead of the Clippers in terms of title contention. And I think that if Dwight Howard can stay healthy for the playoffs mostly... I think that this team could really give the Spurs and the Golden State Warriors some trouble. Well, you know what's funny now that we're sitting here looking at it, right? So the Rockets have propelled themselves up with all these moves. The Clippers have done the same. The Spurs have done the same. And if you remember, in like was it 2012 when the Thunder played the Heat in the finals? Yeah. And they were the top. They were projected to be up there. Right. And it seems like they've just stayed still while each team has passed them by. Yeah. And the Rockets have clearly done that with their offseason addition. Now we're looking at Ty Lawson slotting in. They re-signed Beverly and Brewer, and now those two guys are backups. Yes, especially I think Beverly is, is could be the, the X factor that isn't the starter for this team. Right, because they need to improve their defense, especially with Lawson and Harden now starting. Those aren't right. really great defensive guards. No. So the key is actually going to be Beverly and Brewer's ability to come off the bench and provide instant defense. Yes, and That's going to be powerful for that team. Uh, they also drafted... Sam Decker and Montrez Harrell, mm-hmm. and they also picked up Alan uh, Williams from UC Santa Barbara, who I like a lot as a prospect. I think he's a couple years away in the NBA in terms of like developing his body, right? But I think he can be a real low post scorer in similar. I think you know potentially he could be Louis Scola right now. Okay, I'm not saying he's crazy or anything, but like an eighth ninth man who can score down low. I'm, right, I like him as like a underrated guy. Okay, but. So, Ty Lawson comes in. Okay. Last year, the Rockets were 12th in offensive efficiency. Where do you think this gets them with Ty Lawson? I now? think this easily gets them into the top five because this, uh, no longer does James Harden have to basically create everything uh, by himself. Now he has Ty Lawson who can help him, who can get him better shots. And I think that James Harden could potentially have, he might get a few less shots per game with Ty Lawson now coming and taking a few shots. But I think that efficiency-wise, I think he could have the most efficient year of his career so far. And I think that this will will make the Rockets a very scary team. And we haven't even talked about Trevor Ariza, 
who is a very good 3 and D player who really has come on in uh, in well, years. Well, it's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about the team itself. Yeah. And I think Ty Lawson, as you said, he's going to become more efficient, but I think he's going to help everyone else become yes, more efficient. Yes, definitely. And I think development from Terrence Jones in terms of becoming more, a better corner 3 shooter because uh-huh. he started to do that. I think that would spread their floor so much, allow Dwight to get some offensive rebounds. Right, and they were already him. first in the league in, in three-point shooting last year. Exactly, and this this is going to be one hell of an offensive team that the Rockets are going to be deploying next year. And going forward even, most of their core is intact except for Dwight has a player option and Terrence Jones and Monte Yunus have are restricted free agents after this year. So they're in great shape going forward. Daryl Morey really may have acquired his third star that he's been looking for. Yeah. All right, so that's a wrap in terms of what we think about this trade. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below, and subscribe. Thank you.